Again, I'm here with my very good friend, Sean McCarthy, who's the co-founder and CEO of Build America Mutual. And uh, Sean, cannot thank you enough for having me over. Really, really appreciate it. Right now, if I were in your shoes, one thing that would concern me is you've got all this government regulation that's occurring with regard to financial services and the whole industry. Um, and as a result of it, uh, you there's a lot of pressure on Wall Street. And I look at a place like New York City, and the fact is, is that a very large percentage, I'd actually like to ask you the question, how much of, of New York City's tax revenue is coming from the financial services sector? And if that turns on you, does that then turn on the you know, municipalities? Well, you know, it's a good question. I mean, uh, one of the things you look at is the source of revenues. So, of course, in New York City, uh, the financial services industry is a significant contributor um, and the people who work in it the people who commute, the people who go to the restaurants, the economic, it's a very important part of that. So we look for a, you know, a diversity of, of the base. And uh, so essentially you say, who's likely to move? Is Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley or, or Bank of America Merrill Lynch going to move their headquarters from Manhattan to Jersey City or someplace else? That would be bad for the revenue stream in, in New York City. Uh, we don't think that's likely. So. Things that keep us up at night right now, tr trends across the United States are, are I'd say, twofold. Um, and then apply to every community right now. The first is pension funds. I th you know, we unfunded pension obliga obligations are, um, I think, uh, a source of concern for municipalities going forward. So essentially, what that means is if you look at any city or town and, and you'd say, um, they've made promises to the teachers, the firemen, and the policemen. So when these people who are you know, serving the community in a really significant way retire, they are promised a certain level of benefits, both health and retirement benefits. Um, historically, you have to fund those as you go along. If you don't fund those, what happens is the promises you've made to those employees over time increase dramatically. Now, what that comes down to is uh, the willingness of these communities or their ability, and so it comes back to those two things, ability or willingness, to raise taxes to cover those obligations in the future. So we focus on that. We have an actuary on staff that looks at what those pension fund shortfalls mean for that community, not today, but out you know, 10, 15 years from now. What, what are your views on an MBA? I think it's a waste of time to go back and get an MBA right out of undergraduate school. You have to have real life experience to apply the business theory that you learn in, in, in graduate school. If you, our experience is if you get people, and, and it's less and less frequently that do you see this, that people go right from undergraduate school and you know, work for a year and then go to business school. Usually, we prefer to see people work for you know, three years or more before they get a graduate degree and then have a particular sense of what they're trying to accomplish when they get that graduate degree. So. Um, we hire both undergraduates and people with MBAs. We have hire people with much more specialized degrees as well um, in that I think it's important to have a diverse group of talented people that bring different points of view to the table when you're doing credit analysis. Right. If you have everybody who thinks the same way and has the same background, you'll miss the same issue every time. When you're interviewing people, what are some of the common mistakes? What do you see? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I just interviewed at my alma mater uh, last week, and uh, I've got a couple of pieces of advice for anybody who's <clears throat> taking an interview. If you um, are fortunate enough to have somebody who's taken the time to review your resume and decide that they are going to spend some time with you to interview, prepare. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know why you want to work for this company. Make sure you've done some homework and read their annual report or read some things about generally what's going on in the industry. Uh, look at the, you know, if there's a, uh, a letter that's put out in the front, usually most uh, CEOs describe their goals and aspirations and how they're doing at those things. It's important to know why you want to take that interview. It goes a lot better. I mean, we'll assess your personality. In fact, what we do is interview people one-on-one -on -one at school and then bring them back here for what we used to call Super Saturday, now we call it Fran Fantastic Friday. So we'll bring, a can this year we're bringing back 15 uh, candidates. We'll interview, they'll interview with 20 different people in the company with all different backgrounds. And then we'll decide how many we're gonna hire and make those offers at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. So it's just, 
but it's important to be prepared, be articulate, and focused on why this is a job that you really want. I'm, I'm sure you've already done this, or if you haven't, you're going to do this, but if you were presenting at Georgetown uh, at in the graduation ceremony, uh, are there any other tidbits of advice that you would give the graduating class? If it were me, I would change the process. I would, uh, I would have speakers come and speak about life to the freshman class and not to the senior class. Because, you know, I'm a firm believer that when you're an undergraduate, um, even if you're a liberal arts um, major of any kind, whether it's history or English or whatever, build skills. You have to build skills, whether it's take some economic courses or, or take a, a finance course or just take classes that are going to help you think about the world as it is, even if you never participate in that. That, to me, is a liberal arts education. I'm always surprised at people who get all the way through that experience and they haven't taken a single math course or they haven't taken a single economics course and they're, they are truly a liberal arts major, but their skill base is narrow. They're good at writing essays, they're good at thinking deeply about T.S. Eliot, and I can tell you firsthand that's it's applicable in a very narrow set of circumstances. Right, but you also like people that have outside interests. I mean, Absolutely. I know you've got a ton of them, and, and that makes you a more interesting person. I think that's right. You know, it's not that we look for people who are bungee jumping, but I, I think um, if you look at successful people over a long period of time, they're three-dimensional people. They're not two-dimensional people. The, you rarely find somebody who's long-term successful at what they do, who has you know, just lived and died for work every day. You know, that's just, that's not the right thing. And personally, I, you know, I'm the president of the Westminster Kennel Club and I um, like to fish a lot and shoot a lot and you know, go to visit art galleries. There's just a lot of things I like to do that I think complement, you know, the intensity that I put into, um, you know, the, the job. It, it gives you a perspective. And I think any kind of perspective you get that way it makes you more effective at what you're doing. Okay, now you guarantee me front row seats at the at the you know the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show here in the city. So Absolutely, I'm going to be hitting you up for that. I'll go on record. There you I'll go. even might make you wear a tuxedo. You can <laughs> sit right next to me. Ah, I'll have to go rent one. Uh, anyway, uh, again, I'm here with Sean McCarthy, who's the CEO and co-founder of Build America. Uh, Sean, cannot thank you enough. Uh, really appreciate your time. What you guys have built in a very short period of time is incredibly impressive, and I wish you continued success. Thank you very much.